This is Aaron. And this is? Jessica. And we are the Bryant family. Hey, wave Hayden. Can you, can you wave? What's up? All right. Anyway, he's our producer, so. And Try to help us. I know. We're, <laughs> it's my faith, not my sight. So that way. So. We're gonna do a couple songs for you tonight, and then we're gonna try, a, we're gonna guinea pig a couple of games uh, going your way, some competition. So have your phones ready, your tablets ready, whatever you use to type in answers, and hopefully we will um, get you in there. As we said before, our um, prizes are, what are they guys? Toilet paper and hand sanitizer. Right. If we can find any. Yeah, so there's some places that have it. I have graphite hand sanitizer in my truck, so yeah, manly, yeah. Right, so um, I don't want that frou-frou kind. So anyway, and two-ply, not that one-ply stuff. You know, we don't want that. And so we're gonna do a couple songs. We're gonna do Sweet By and By and How Great Thou Art. So hopefully you can join in with us, all right? Oh, 
My main instrument is the piano, so you have to forgive me on this guitar thing. I get to hurting on my hands and my fingertips, so, uh, but it's, it's all good. This, this quarantine has caused me to be able to uh, pick this up a little bit more, so I usually just play at church camp, do fun little songs, so um, it's good to sing some hymns and some praise songs also with guitar. So we're going to do another one, an old classic. This is my grandmother's uh, favorite song of all time. I wanted to sing this because, uh, you know, my grandmother was really the reason why we started going to church again. My dad grew up in church, and um, he quit going to church when he got out of high school, like a lot of teenagers do, and um, got a family and started, um, started, you know, thinking about his own life and his own direction for his kids. But all my grandmother wanted was for uh, my dad to come back to church for a Mother's Day gift. And so he did, and the rest is history. So thank you, Grandma. I should say thank you, Grandma. Grandma Gladys. Grandma Gladys. So um, she's the reason we're all in church today because um, of a Mother's Day request. So uh, we're coming up on Mother's Day. So praise God. Let's sing this song. Switzerland, you know, she's our safe haven. All, all the boys growing up in teenage years, they can always go to grandma and they can always just um, bend her ear and she would not judge. And I, I love that about her. And so, thank you, mom, for that. You have anything you want to say to your mom? I love you and I miss you. And I hope, you know, if you're watching, that you 
can hear this message and we're just excited for, for um, Mother's Day and, and miss you. Alright. Hey, anything you want to say? Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, and thank everyone for being here. Uh, I'm very glad to have you. Uh, and, uh, love you. Don't make me cry. All right. Quick clap. <laughs> All right. Okay, so let's, let's switch gears right now. We're going to go to um, our next slide. Hold on, hold on. Come on. Sorry. All right. Let's get This is our logo. Some birthdays, early May birthdays. Mike Gothard. Today. Uh, today, I hear, I hear that you might be getting a fish dinner tonight. So that's pretty awesome. So uh, that's today. And then BJ Masters coming up on Saturday. Big and six zero. Big six zero, right? All right. So um, be, be in prayer for him and the Geritol tablets is going to start taking. So uh, Juanita uh, Elizondo, I can't I make sure I say that right. Um, on the tenth, and also Jacob Powell on the tenth. So we got some birthdays. This is just half of them, but we're we're going to be looking at the other half later on in the month. But these are the ones coming up real soon this week. So. We want to, you know, give honor where honor is due. It's really a sign of God's faithfulness about having another birthday because God kept you around another year. So we'll be praying for you to have another great year. Uh, a couple, another thing is uh, we're going to have a work day this coming Saturday, May 9th at 9 a.m. And so um, our deacon, who's the head of our, our maintenance around the church, general maintenance, he, he's devised a list. I'm sure that even, might even be growing tonight. And the list is uh, right here. Um, some of the cutting back vines, cleaning up the place basically. There's some electrical stuff also, sprinkler repair, and, and um, we even have a squirrel loose in the church. I heard once if you baptize a squirrel, then they'll come back. So um, yeah, maybe that's what happens. But I'm bumps. So, hey, hey, Hayden, do you have any dad jokes you want to share with us? Uh, none currently on me. Uh, What's one that you, you got one from memory? Pizza joke. What's the pizza? You, you got that pizza joke, you can say it. I have a joke about pizza. I tell it, but it's too cheesy. Oh man, that was wrong. That's the worst bad joke. All right. You, you got one, Hannah? I can't remember one. I'm sorry. Oh my. Okay. Okay, next slide. All right, we're gonna do something called Bible Mad Gap. We're going to take some phrases that make no sense, and then you're going to have to figure out what it really says. These are phrases that are in the Bible. Okay, so... Um, so here's where you get your texting out, you get ready to respond. Right, right. So if you can guess what this phrase is, then you text in. We're going to do the first one together so you know what to do. Okay? So the, the first, first one is here. Fork, if, fuss, czar, sins. For, and then you say it faster in your head or out loud. For, kif, fuss, sar, sins. Okay? Now, we're going to reveal the answer so that you know what it is. Forgive us our sins. Okay? So, that's how it's played. If we don't get a lot of participation, I do have another game. I just want to see how this would play um, tonight. So... Um, last week, I think Denise was our winner, right? Denise is pretty solid every week. Yeah. So she's, um, she was down at the church just a few minutes ago, so I don't even know if she's on. But um, we have Kathy Byford, who was really good. Uh, Glenn, also. Do we have anybody that's uh, texting in? Go to the next one, please. Yep, we had someone answer those. Oh, uh, you went too far, oh, buddy. What did I do? Go to the, the next, next one. one. Nope. You got to go back the other way. Producer. Okay. Butcher ho pink ah. Butcher ho pink ah. Butcher ho pink ah. Okay, don't give it away. Okay. Okay. Let's see. We're a little bit behind, so. Okay. So, we're going to reveal this one because we already showed it. That was an accident. No, it's fine, but just click one time. Put your hope in God. Put your hope in God. So, hopefully, you know how to play this now that we. We've seen this. Let's go to the next one. Just one time, please. Tell Horde some I ship heard. 
Dell hoards some I ship heard. Dell hoards some I ship heard. If you get it kind of close, then Hayden's going to give me a thumbs up and we'll know that we got it right. Okay? We even have some California people watching tonight. What? No way. Yep. How are you doing, dude? All right. Rocking hard. All right. Uh, we don't have any guesses on this one yet. Okay. This one, these are games a little bit hard. So let's let's go ahead and reveal what that is. Maybe, maybe refresh it. Uh, I'm... The Lord is my shepherd, Barbara Dollins. Oh, look at that. Hey. The Lord is my shepherd. Good job, Barbara. And Glenn and Donna. So we got she's she's okay. my new sister-in-law, by the way. Shout out to Barbara in California. All right. So. Half sister. Half sister. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sister -in -law. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Something like that. All right. Something close. Though. Okay, next one. Bull Dazzle Iron. Bull Dazzle Iron. This is a smaller one, so you should be able to get it a little easier. Okay? Bull Dazzle Iron. Wait. Talking about the righteous are this. The righteous are as this. Okay? We don't have any guesses yet. No guesses? This was a hard one. I couldn't get this one either. Bull, dazzle, iron. Bull, dazzle, iron. Bull, dazzle, iron. This game may be lost in translation. I think it's a little. We should go to the next Just game. reveal this one and we'll go to the next game. Okay? Bull as a lion. Okay. Again, oh, that. good job, Barb. Alright, we're going to go to the next game. Go to the next slide. Let's go to the or next game. Keep going. Come on. Alright. We're going to guess the state from the plate. Okay. So what you have to do is guess where this plate is from. You're going to text him with the name of the state. Okay. And this has to do with a devotional tonight. It's not just some random license plate yeah. game. Yeah, so so you're gonna see a plate without the name of the state on it, and you have to tell us where it's from, what state it's from, okay? If it's from California, which I know there's no plates here from California, if there's a Texas plate, you'll be able to spot it pretty quick, okay? There's no Texas or California plates on there. So um, our devotional tonight is about fuel efficiency or faith efficiency. And so I'm gonna give you 10 things to think about tonight. But let's go to the first plate. All right, this plate, uh, there's a big old tree right in the middle of it. You may not know what that is. We see these a lot in Northern California. So I'll give you a hint. But it's not California, of course. So it's there. Close by. Anybody? Oh. Uh, Glen Ozell at Oregon. There it is. Oregon, right. Okay. Okay. This is a hard one. You guys The natural this state. Here. Look at Diamond. Diamond Mines here. One of the only places in America that has Diamond Mines. The natural state. Borders our state that we're in right now. I'll give you that hint. Not Kansas, right? It's nope. not Kansas. Arkansas. 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 There we go. Donna Livingston. All right. Good job, Donna. Here. All right. This Ooh. one is easy. So I think. That's an iconic thing of that state. Life elevated. The state is higher than other states. It isn't like Ohio. You know the joke about Ohio, right? It's round on the sides and high in the middle. Ha ha ha. Oh, hi, oh. Uh, All right. Glen Ozella, Utah for the win. All right, good job, Glen. Nope, we had a lot of Arizonas, but nope. Okay. All right, the Constitution State. All right. You can guess what that might be? This is. This might take you a minute to text it. It's not the home of prune juice either, Constitution. Oh, God. That's a dad joke. <laughs> that was a dad joke. Uh, yeah. So, it's shaped like that up there at the top. 
Give me a hint. Patricia, Philadelphia is not a state. Uh-oh. All right. It's a cream cheese. Connecticut, yes. Yeah. Good job. Sorry, and if I am saying these in the wrong order, please give me some grace because I'm on this little tiny phone where they just keep going, going, going. Yeah. So if I miss you or if I shout out the wrong name, I apologize. All right. All right. So the next one. Ooh, the Garden State. I don't know why. Chris Christie. I don't know why it's the Garden State. Yeah, it's not really gardeny, but. It's all right. the, the state right there. Yeah. That's all the reason I And that's all the that's all the um the sewage is plant goes through it. <laughs> oh my god. Just New Jersey, kidding. yes, we got New Jersey. Jersey, Jersey yep. boys. Alright. I gotta turn my hat backwards for Jersey, okay? Oh my all right. goodness. Alright. Okay. Next one. Vacation land. It's known for vacation land. Or the slogan is the way life should be. Oh, fun man. fact, Jessica graduated high school in the state. What? Stage No. No. Meg Meg. Anybody get it? Hawaii? I wish I graduated. Oh man, you never you never leave. I wouldn't have left. Vacation land. No, nope, it's it's the, it's extremely the other way than Hawaii. You can't get any further away from Hawaii and be an American. Not Florida. No, we've got a lot of Florida. Yeah. Look, he's got a pine tree and some a bird. Santa Chapel, Maine it is. Good job. All right. Maine. Plain, the rain faint fell in Blaine or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. All right. Next one. If you can get this one. This was hard for me when I saw it. I knew this one, but for an entirely different reason. <laughs> I don't know. That, I didn't know this one either. I got a little pelican down here. Yep. And lake, water, Some rocks, trees. trees. I don't know, man. It's zero, 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 zero. I know. It's a weird picture. That's the first plate ever made in the state. Yeah. What are the guesses so far? Anybody have guesses? We don't have this. Yes, yeah, unless we're Unless Wisconsin, South Carolina, Louisiana. Right. I don't remember what it is. No. Like, no. No. Hayden's got it right in front of him. Nope, no, 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 not South Carolina. Minnesota? No. no. It's a south southern state. It, it's definitely a southern state. I feel like it would be Louisiana with the Pelican. Down that way. Tennessee? No. no. You know what Tennessee? Oh. Oh, that's funny. Okay, I say we give them the answer. Okay. okay. All right, next yeah. one. Sweet Alabama. Alabama. Damn. All right. A famous potato. That Come gives on. it away right there. I do. <laughs> famous potatoes. They're called spuds there, huh? I don't know. I can't cook potatoes, so I wouldn't know. What, really? Oh. Idaho, yep. Idaho. Yeah. See it? Yeah. Idaho. Idaho. And one last one. One last state, okay? Wild and wonderful. I love this one. Okay. Okay, this is a hard one. I thought. For for those of you that are following the news, it was the last state that had coronavirus. <laughs> oh, there you go. Great. Way to bring it back in. Sorry. No, it's not Florida. Nope. It's got two names to the state name. Or two parts. The first part is a direction. Dad, <laughs> no, I won't. No, I do North, south, east, or west. We got Florida, Washington, Wyoming, Hawaii, Minnesota. Oh, this is a oh. really hard one. It's either north, south, east, or west. Not North Dakota. I'll give you a hint. I'm going to give it a hint. Sure. It starts with a B. Well, the second. Well, I mean. The second. Oh, yeah. It's up north, south, east, or west. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. West Virginia. There it is. Alright. 
Good job. All right. Way to work as a team over there, Glenn and Susan. Good job. All right. I told you this was going to do with our devotional tonight, so I didn't want to. I didn't want to leave you hanging. So we thought thought this would be a great opportunity to share with you um, some of the things as we we're we're getting towards the end. We see the light at the end of our coronavirus tunnel, and um, we start seeing people going out more. We're going to be using more gas. So I thought I'd help you out with some tips on how to save some gas. But more than just fuel, this is more about faith. And so we want to talk to you tonight about that. If you go to the next slide, holy, uh, higher mileage for holy rolling. This is going to be over in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 through 3. And so I want you to, if you have your Bibles with you, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine too. We're going to read this together. So the next slide is... Wherefore, seeing we also are, are compassed with a great cloud of witnesses, we lay aside every weight and the sin which doth easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Okay, our, per, our producer is a little slow here tonight. You need to pay attention, right? All right, all right. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your minds. Faint meaning want to give up. If you ever feel like you want to give up, you probably got a low tank of faith, right? I don't believe we have a sin problem. We have a faith problem. Faith is the fuel of our, of our walk with God. And the Lord feeds that into us through, through prayer and study of the Bible. So we're going to look at 10 things very quickly tonight that are going to help maintain your faith. Remember what tonight is. Tonight is a Wednesday refueling. It's about getting into God's Word and to remember that not only do we have His Word, but we have His words through prayer. God speaking to our heart. He speaks as a still, small voice, and we need to drown out everything else and draw in close to hear. He will not compete against the other things in your life. So you have to make sure that you can do that tonight. So, number one. Number one, very crucial. Travel it together. You ever heard of carpooling? You're going to cut your gas bill in half if you carpool. It's just immediate, right away, you're going to, you're going to stop. Do you know that we're not the first people and we're not the last people to ever have trusted in the Lord? We are encompassed about with a great cloud of witnesses. When you know that you're not alone, you, it's like you're carpooling in faith. It's like you've got a companion. We, the Bible says over in Ecclesiastes, two are better than one for their great reward for their labor. Well, and, and go ahead. Sorry to interrupt, no. but a, a fire burns stronger and hotter with more than one log, right? So when we're together... Our faith, we can draw off each other. I know that at least if I'm having a rough time or something, if I sit close to my group, then I can kind of get some of that positive and encouragement off of them and not be left in isolating myself. Right, right. See, we're in campus, we're camped about with a great cloud of witnesses. There's people marching on. Imagine if we're in a in a stadium. You know, they, they call um, Seattle Stadium the, what was it? The 12th man. The 12th man because... It's so loud in that stadium. It's the loudest stadium in America. And, and it's like they're another player on the team. And we need to know that we have each other. We have each other's back. So that's a great way to be fuel or faith, faith efficient. Number two, uh, lighten up the load. A lot of times, I, I know this, I used to carry my old truck, I used to carry bags of cement in the back, you know, in the wintertime to hold the traction down so that you wouldn't slide all, all over the road. And uh, if you do that in the summertime, you're just going to ruin your, uh, your mileage, right? Your uh, fuel efficiency. You have to lighten the load. It, you get better gas mileage with, with less in your car than more. And a lot of people, we, we, we tend to do just that. We put too much into our, into our life. And if you can't make it bad, it makes you, you know, busy or bothered or bewildered, you know. You know, broken, you know, whatever the case may be, but you're filled up with other things other than God. 
My yoke is easy. My burden is light, the Bible says about the Lord. But everything else we carry into our faith is heavy. And we can also lighten our load by turning our fears and our all of our concerns over to God. That takes a burden off of us, too, like Aaron was just saying. But it's not always just our daily life, but it's our prayer life, too, that we make sure that we're turning things over to the Lord for Him. Amen. Amen. So, number three, shoring up sleepness. You know, they spend, they spend countless hours of blowing air onto a car, you know, and just they keep it in a wind tunnel, and they, they look for little places where the air might not, you know, make it aerodynamic. And so every curve is important on a car. And then we buy the car, and then we put on, you know, wings on the back, and we make stylish things on, on cars, and, and we, have, we have things hanging off the edge and all that. And we, we don't drive it the way it's intended. So the sticker may say that we have a certain gas mileage, but we may have something else uh, entirely because of the sleepness. And sometimes we need to run the race as someone who can just do that. The sin that so easily besets us. If you think about it, sin is that, is that thing that uh, just knocks us off course. When you look at a runner, he wears the lightest clothes um, possible. A little tank top, little light shorts. His shoes are almost as light as air. And some, you know, some, some even shave their legs. You know, the men shave their legs and all their body hair. I remember Flo Jo, right? Yeah. Swim, swimmers do that too. And so they're, they're constantly uh, moving really fast and they want to, you know, lose that uh, wind, wind rejection, so to speak. Yeah, so we have to do that too in our, in our daily life. Ask God to forgive us of our sins so we don't have to go to our, our head at night with those things on our hearts. Next one. Efficient engine, that's so important, you know, having a good engine. You know, if you have an engine that's overworking itself, it's going to burn fuel and it's going to burn out sooner. If you're in a place of burnout and you feel like you're just wanting to give up, you know, it's part of that engine, the heart of, what, of, of who we are. Maybe we need to ask the Lord, as David said, creating us a clean heart, a new right spirit within us. Get that engine right. You know, fear is like the sand to an engine where uh, faith is the oil to it. And we need to not put sand in our engine because we're going to destroy the things that God intended. And the Bible says here in this passage, and let us run the race. This is, this is a race that is um, a distant race. It's not, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. We have to keep going. And this also, you know, just like in your car, if you don't take it to oil changes, you don't take it to get, you know, you don't check things. If you don't take time for yourself to spiritually recharge, you're going to burn out or you're going to be, have anxiety or, you know, just anything that can beset you. And so, so important to just take that time. Even though you think you have no time to take time, you, do, you really are having problems if you don't. Yeah, and just like a pit crew, you have to you have to go back and get in the pit sometimes. Like going to church, and getting in your Bible, getting with some friends. Take care of the engine, okay? Next one. Lay out the lead foot. My wife laughs at this one because it's, pa it's about patience. Well, and it's about the lead foot. I'm a lead foot. Yeah, right. But right. it is about patience. If you want to get there before me, ride with her, okay? Every time. And, and you know, that's the case with patience. A lot of times when we can't find our directions, what do we do? We accelerate. Because we get, we get frazzled, we get in a hurry, and we lose, we lose our focus. And that's what patience is, is wanting before God's timing. And that's never a good thing. Because God may just give you what you are asking for. And when we push down on the gas pedal uh, further, it burns through that gas uh, a lot faster. So there's an efficiency of the engine, and if you go with that efficiency, you're going, to, you're going to burn more fuel. You're going to ruin your faith in the long term with not having patience. I like the old saying, either have patience or you become one. 
right? So, okay, lay out that lead foot. Plan your trip. Now, if you don't plan your trip, you're, you're probably going to stop other places. You're probably going to stop, you know, if you're going from here, here to the church. We're only, you know, about a mile and a half from the church, church building. But if I think about it, I may stop down the street. I may stop at the donut shop, you know, you know, guys donuts, you know, got to have a Mexican restaurant. I may, I may stop at other places, even in a mile and a half. But think about where you drive and where you go. And, and where your faith is, you know, the, the old so song said, be careful little eyes what you see, well the Father up above is looking down a lot, but be careful little eyes what you see, and what your heart and your eyes and your ears, you know, all of those things, it, you know, it's dealing with, you know, keeping yourself in the right path, you know, and, and a lot of us have a hard time doing that, and we have to set and plan, the Bible says, you know, that you have to plan, if you go to war, you go to, you go to a plan. If you make a building, you go to, you make a plan. The planning part sometimes can take longer than the actual building part because of you know engineers, right? Because your toys cut one. Right, right. So plan things out so you don't get distracted. Next one. Good gas, right? How many of us want the cheapest gas in town? We brag about it, we post it on selfies. Get like the, hey everybody, I got the cheapest gas. I'm going to Sam's Club and you know, it's usually a little cheaper down there. And then am I getting good gas? Is it, is it going to be good for my car? Is it going to be good long term? Because that's what our faith is. It's long term. It's not short term. And he says that looking unto Jesus. Jesus is our fuel. You know, our faith is only as good as what we have our faith in. I can have faith in my brakes in my car, and they could be out. But God's never going to be out. He's never going to give up in helping us. And he's our very present help in trouble. And so, he's our faith. Remember Peter walking on water? He looked up to Jesus, and he stayed afloat. His fuel was there. But as soon as he took his eyes off, boom, he started to sink. And he cried out to Jesus, and Jesus lifted him back up. That's the fuel. So, good gas, right? Now, the next one, topping off the tank. Now, one of the things I read is that, is that if you have a lower amount in your tank and you keep a lower amount in your tank, that the vapors inside the tank burn hotter and faster, causing, causing that little bit to burn quicker than if you had a full tank. So, I didn't know that when I was doing this uh, lesson. But, but that's very interesting because... When you have a full tank, your gas will last longer than if you had less, less gas in the tank. Well, and if you have a full tank of Jesus and faith and God, then you have less room for other monkey business to get in there. And so I think that's something, too, that, you know, it's the story about what do you fill in your cup, right? And what yeah. it drops and what spills out. So I think that's another right. analogy you can use. The author, he's the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the beginning and the end. The author sits down to write. He gets the credit for beginning the story. But he, he doesn't just begin the story. He finishes it. He fills you up to the brim. You know, and your cup runneth over. Isn't that what it says in the Psalms? It's, your cup should run over. And it should spill out in other people's lives. And that's, that's the case here. Is we have to top off the tanks of our, our life. For longevity. We say we love the Lord, but we are loyal to Him in the fact that we fill up our life every day. Or do you limp into church going, oh, I finally made it. You're going to get tired of being tired all the time if you do that. So, next one, number nine. Number nine, desire your direction. Now, how many of you just have, have fun sometimes? This is the type B. Now, I'm talking to her. She's type A. I'm type B. Sometimes the journey is half the fun. Going on that road trip, going, going just sightseeing. And sometimes you've got to do that. And you, you say, well, that's not efficient fuel usage. But understand, those are the priceless moments you can never get back. Those are the things when we, we go off and see the largest ball of twine in Minnesota. You take the path, you know, less travel. You know, it, it's important that we take those times. 
Jesus, knowing he, he only had three and a half years of ministry, he had to start a church, and he had to build people up for that church. He took time in the mountains and the seashore to, you know, get rejuvenated. You have to take the pit stop times. That's so important. You know, for the joy was set before him. Jesus saw the cross not as a burden but a blessing because he knew the end result. And I think that's important for us. Is there is we need to let some let loose a little bit with our um, with the direction sometimes because yeah. it getting there is half the fun. Yeah. And I think knowing even when you know your destination, you can still, like you said, have fun getting there. I know when I'm going to work, well, before all this, but, you know, it would still be, oh, a day at work, but I can have the music up, I can have the windows down, and just be enjoying in the moment so that I was prepared for when I got to work, which might not be where I wanted to be that time, but it's still taking that time to kind of get centered right. with God, get right with God before you handle the rest of the day. See, efficiency is not all about just saving. Efficiency is to make the best of it. And sometimes we have to make the best of the time that we're in traveling from one place to another. We talk about the sweet by and by and precious memories. Those are two directional songs. But how about the now and now? How about the time right now that we can focus on? And so the last one here, air conditioning. Now, I, I heard this also, and this is one of those debatable things, is does air conditioning cause you to lose your um, gas mileage or gain it. it. To me, it seemed like it seemed more logical that I would lose gas mileage if I had my air conditioning. I have to turn it on. Oh, you know, and that's one thing we'd have to do in fighting the car. I get really hot, she gets cold really fast. So we have a dual air thing going on. Best invention. And we fight all the time over that. It's like the dumbest thing to fight over, over AC. But a lot of times people do that in their life. They fight over the anger issues. They're red hot all the time. They're, you know, anger is that surface level, level emotion that just sits right under the surface. Anger really hides the fact that we're fearful or we're sad or we're, um, we're worried. We're, um, you know, um, we're hurt, scared. You know, it, it hides that because when we just get angry over something, then we can just... Um, push it off. It's a defense mechanism to our heart. But that's the same way with air conditioning. You know, when Jesus was um, in this passage of scripture, it says he, he considered himself someone who endured the contradiction of sinners against himself. He was able to be contradicted from sinners and that those people that were against him and he was called. We always see him, you know, uh, getting angry in the temple. You know, he just he overturned the money changers' tables. It was for a purpose other than himself. It was for his father. He had fought the father's house. And he was upset over that. And, you know, anger comes in, you know, those five areas. Uh, animosity, A. Uh, narrowness, uh, in G, grudges. Anybody got grudges towards anybody? Eruptive behavior, just rah, comes out. And then revenge. You know, animosity, grudges, uh, or animosity, narrowness, grudges, eruptive behavior, and revenge. Those are the five areas in which anger kind of produces itself. And then we have to turn on the AC of our faith. And we have to just kind of, I gotta cool down. I gotta cool down. This is really ticking me off. And I'll tell you what, you get enough of those times where you have to start cooling down, you start saying, is my faith even worth it? Is me coming to this church really even worth it? And me being a Christian even worth it? And I, I keep thinking as you're talking about, you know, anger is like a pot of boiling water, right? The, the least amount of water you have in the pot, the faster it's going to boil. And if that water is our faith, you add more in there and it's not going to boil as fast. It's not going to get as hot as fast. And that's really critical. And I know I'm one that I have a hard time with patience and I get upset easily, and so that's something that I really struggle to work on, and I do work on, um, and so it's just, it's a good reminder. Right, so so here's, these are just 10 things, you know, there may be uh, 1,000 things, but the point is that 
we're, we're just taking a look at our faith, our efficiency of our faith. Because we, our faith has had to endure some things. But at least we've had the internet, we've had enough toilet paper, you know. We've had uh, enough food. We've had we've had uh, modern convenience. We've had the we, we've had technology. We had Blue right? Angels today. Blue Angels was awesome. Flew right over here by the house, and you know that all those little things are stopping the smell of the roses. And and we need to count our blessings. We need also to conquer our burdens. We need to also confront our battles. We need to do all those things that are going to make our faith stronger, fortifying our faith. And if we don't, then we're going to lose out. We're going to have empty tanks, and we're going to have wrecked engines, and then we're, we're, we're sunk. God is the lifter of our head, and He is, carries our yoke. And it would be a shame for any one of us not to turn our life over to Him. If you don't know Him as Savior and Lord, I pray that this might be the night that you ask Him in your heart. It's as simple as ABC. Uh, admit you're a sinner, and we all do that. And be believe that he's the Savior, but it has to come from not just a head knowledge to a heart knowledge. We have to believe. That belief needs to sink in to be a trust that comes in. We really believe it. And then see, we need to call on him for salvation. So that's what it is. The wages of sin is death, and the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's as simple as that. So this Mother's Day, you want to make mom happier than anything else than buying her a gift? Get the gift of Jesus Christ. And that will that will make mom happier than happier than a clam, right? I don't I don't even know what that means. I think because the opening of a clam shell is wide like a smile and it's big. So I don't know why. But um, why did I get off that tangent? I have no idea. Anyway, that was our last slide, correct? Alright. So Keep yourself safe, and we're going to end with prayer and ask God's blessing on the rest of our evening tonight. And I hope and pray that you take these 10 things to heart. Maybe you need to write them down. They'll be on Facebook and on YouTube. Any last words before we dismiss? No, I hope that everyone has a great rest of their week. We are having a service on Sunday, and just, um, you know, we're being very cautious for following the state and the CDC guidelines and we're requested if you don't feel well, if you um, are over 65 or you have a, another health compromising condition that you want, continue to watch us on Facebook and we um, love and care and pray for all of you but we want to keep everyone safe during this time and um, we look forward to seeing those people that are able to attend on Sunday for services in the Sunday school at this time. So, They'll um, be online on Facebook right. Live and also on YouTube. But um, we do want to adhere to those. Go to our Facebook page to see some of the things that we're um, doing to protect and to ensure social distancing and some safety issues. Please do that. And we'll be posting more this week. So thank you and God bless. Continue to watch the pastor's um, um, nightly devotions at 5 o'clock. And we'll be seeing you again Sunday. Thank you. Let's Dear Lord, we thank you and praise you for this time together. We just pray, Lord, that you will, um, you'll be with us to uh, fill our tanks up. And if it means to be more thankful, more prayerful, more patient, Lord, whatever we need to be more of, Lord, fill us up with those things. We know that at times that you... We have to be driven down to our knees. And so, Lord, be, uh, be the spiritual uplift we need through your word and your spirit and through other people, Lord. Lord, we need flesh and blood just as much as spirit and truth at times to help uh, give us counsel and wisdom. Thank you for this time together. We pray, Lord, that you'll give us uh, strength, direction, and purpose as we follow you in your son's precious name. Amen. Amen. Good night, everyone. Good night.